Hello everybody and welcome back to the burrow. So I know I told everybody the next video would be a DIY video and I really didn't intend to do that. But I would forgotten that this weekend was the Michigan Reptiles show in Taylor. It's once a month and I missed it the last two because I've been doing things and I really need to get some feeders and stuff like that. Because they're just getting too expensive buying them at pet stores and there's some other stuff I needed. Now I planned not to get anything but that when I went there but we all know how that goes. So now I have some things I need to rehouse and I want to go over that with you. So. Let me just show you what I got. First things first, um, these are just mealworms, about 100 count of them, not a big deal. Just to feed the slings, I want to give them some more variety. These here are wax worms. I don't know if everybody has seen these. Just basically little, it's like maggots almost. These will be good for my slings, give them a nice little bit bigger meal. Uh, get off me there, okay. Uh, these here, we all know, these are just super worms, or I believe some of you call them Mario worms. Yeah, see. So those are for some of my uh, medium-sized tarantulas. Even my bigger ones will eat them. Now let's get into some of the more fun things. Now this came in this cup, but I had to uh, put them in something else because when I opened it up just now to do the video, they all seemed like they were dead. And it freaked me out, honestly, so I took them out. Put them by some heat, and uh, I'll tell you what these are in a second, though. Uh, I found a vendor at this Taylor show that I haven't seen before, and I just had to get something from him to help support him. His website is roachcrossing.com. Now, put that in the description below, and he has a lot of other inverts. I've been really interested in looking at different roaches, isopods, beetles, that kind of thing, and really interested in making a communal setup, and I just had to talk to this guy, and he's really helpful. So I, I ended up getting off him, is these aren't for a communal, because I'm not going to get that yet, I'm going to work with him on what to get first. These are actually domino roaches, and I will put a picture of what they look like as adults. Here, I'll pull one out. Fast little guys. Hey, hey, get back, get back, get back. Get back in there. No, not in my hand. There we go. And um, when they get adult, they actually look really nice. And so it'd be fun to have these and instead of watching them run around. And when they breed enough, I'll sell them either um, to a vendor or to my subscribers. Now this is why I got this really cool. I didn't get these from him. I actually found these at a different place. These are blue death feigning beetles. Now these guys are pretty cool. They're harmless. You can pick them up. Let's see if they'll let me. Hey. Oh, oh, see, and there he is, feigning death. <laughs> and that's where they get their name, see? He's just pretending he's dead. Now, if I touch him there, it should wake him up, I think. Let's see. Nope. He's just going to feign death. So I don't want to freak him out too much. I'll put him back in there. So I need to set up their home and the roaches home, because these are not feeders. These are actually going to be just for my enjoyment. So I got to get... Um, them house and these guys rehouse today and we're gonna do that right now now unfortunately I have to start off with some bad news here uh, our mantis did pass away earlier this week I'm not sure what happened or why I am very new to mantises so I, I could have messed up something but it had eaten just the day before I gave it a uh, red runner roach took it was eating it it's, it was all gone when I looked in there I actually had a second one in there that was all gone when I looked there's no way for it to get out, so it looks like it had eaten, and I had put water in there that same time just before that, so the substrate was damp, it had water in the walls to drink, everything was how I thought it should be, but he still, when I seen the next day, the next morning, he was gone. Uh, what can you do? I mean, live and learn, I guess, I mean, it's not happy about it, but I think I'm going to lay off Mantis for a little bit till you know, I have some more experience with him, or, you know, get something that's a little bit easier than what I had started with. So we are going to reuse their home for the roaches just because I know they can't climb out. And from what I understand, down our roaches can climb unlike our other roaches, so our feeders. I, I just want to make sure these are not getting out of my house. And this is probably the best container I have for the moment. Now, this is just a temporary home because I wasn't planning on getting these. I do want to get them something uh, much larger, something like what I'm going to be putting the blue fainting death beetles in. Just see that. I'm going to get them about the same size so they can breed and grow. I think so when I get a bunch of them, I'll start selling them or I'll sell them to other distributors so that they can get more into uh, the industry around here, the hobby. So what I started with is just um, peat moss, 
Same stuff I use for my tarantulas. Uh, now I usually miss some topsoil, but I'm not going to do that for these guys. Um, they like a lot of leaf litter. So, luckily I got some of that. They don't like climbing that much. Oh, I'm not going to waste that big giant leaf. That's pretty cool. So we're just going to take some of these smaller leaves. Put them in there. Gives them the place to run around underneath and hide. So there we go. Just put a bunch in there. They eat everything that your normal feeder roaches do, from us told. So, uh, ground up dog food, and then mostly carrots, apples, lettuce, that kind of stuff for water sources. You don't really need to give them water other than that. Now, I'm basically just going to drop them all in there. And there's quite a few. I think he said there's 15 in here. I didn't count them, though. And he said that these are only about a month out from becoming adult, which will then they'll get their domino pattern, as in the image I showed you. And I can't wait to see that for these guys to start breeding. But if this is just temporary, these are going to go into something much bigger. Just going to dump them in. That flat. Can see, can I see them all scatter, scurrying around in there. There's quite a few of them. They're really doing well. Like I said, uh, I'm going to leave the uh, link to, in the description below to this vendor. Because I think we really should be supporting anybody in the industry right now in the hobby. That's bringing stuff in that's a little different and new. Get um, the hobby really going. I mean, we can't have something like a BTS if we don't have a lot more variety than just two or three tarantula vendors. And that's just not going to cover everything, you know, for getting a whole setup for a, um, an expo. All right, let's put the lid on these guys. I'm going to go to the store today get a bunch of vegetables for these, the beetles, my other feeders. So I'm going to get that covered. I think a lot of these guys can really climb the walls, but I'm not taking any chances. Okay, let's put them aside. Now let's rehouse the beetles. Okay, now this is the enclosure that I'm going to use for the blue Fain Death beetles. This used to be the Ace of Monty's enclosure, and then I didn't think he really liked it. He is really liking the five guns a little bit deeper. Burrowed down, gone, haven't seen them. Probably not going to see them again for a while. So, for these guys though, you don't use um, your normal uh, cocoa fiber, peat moss, dirt, any of that stuff. What you use is actually sand. They prefer to be extremely dry. So we start off with putting sand in. Oh, jeez. I just want to grab the whole bag of play sand from Home Depot. And then we said you only want about an inch of substrate. Now you want to put in Get this hole a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm gonna put enough to get about an inch of substrate of sand in, and you want to mix in a little bit of peat moss. It says so. Peat moss, cocoa fiber, something like that to I don't know, give it some more texture. So I got that here. And this is really dry, so it'll help dry out the sand a bit. That should be good. Let's mix this all up. There we go. Now, that should be good. Now, for decorations, I'm going to be putting this in for a hide. I just got to cut some holes in it, so I'm going to go do that right now. And there we go. I used my soldering iron to cut these just because it gave it a uh, smoother edge. It's not as sharp, and it also gives it kind of a look like they chewed their way into it. I'm just going to put this right in the middle. Oh, no, that's right. I was going to do something else. Now that I actually have the pattern there, I don't want to put it just like there's nothing in there. I'm going to give them... Some stuff in there to crawl on a bit, I guess. So that it's not just empty in there. There we go. I can't really make it so they have things to hide under or anything like that, but just so it's not just you know, flat in there, I guess. Now I want to sink this down in there a bit. Crawl in easily enough. Now 
Now for decorations. Um, I have a couple of interesting things. One is I think this will look really cool. Just go in the sand to hold it up. I have to get it all the way down that sand, apparently. There we go. The way the beetle isn't going to make that move at all, so that should be good. I have a cactus. I got this from the dollar store. It came in a pot. I just ripped the pot off, used that for hides that I use. And now I'm going to put this. Some of them are not going to really dig because I can use the stick underneath the, to hold it up more. They don't really dig. I ain't going to work. They don't really dig, so I'm not really worried about that. And these are not sharp. They're just soft plastic. So it'll just look like a cactus in there. And then I got another one of these. Same thing came in a pot from the dollar store. Um, put that. Oh, maybe I can't use that because um, I can probably cut that off. Okay, there we go. I just cut the end off a little bit. And that should sit there just fine. Give it something to crawl over. A little bit of, I guess, enrichment, you'd call it. Mm, probably not put that there. Let's. Put that over here. I'm gonna put this over here. They can go under that on top of it. Now I still have some stones. I wanna put some in a few places, just around. Maybe make a little stone pile over here. Gotta make sure they're not gonna fall on top of them, like if they crawl on them and that. Cause you don't want them to get hurt by the decorations you put in there. That'd be counterproductive I think there I think that works just fine that should be good we don't need to put um, any leaf litter or anything like that in there because like I said they are a desert species so now let me just grab them okay well, there's one let me get him in here first oh, buddy. There you go. Stop them all in there. Oh, <laughs> they just went to a big pile. And look, they're all fainting death. Every one of them right now is fainting death. They'll eventually start moving around, exploring. I think that's a pretty good setup for them. I don't know a whole lot about them, so if anybody out there knows a lot more than me, has a different opinion, uh, let me know in the comments below. I always appreciate, you know, help and comments like that, as long as they're constructive. I mean, if they're not constructive, go ahead, do it too. I don't really care. Um, well, here we go. They're starting to move around. I do need to get a feeding type of dish in here somewhere. I'm going to have to work that in, because uh, I don't want to put food just on the sand. But other than that, it's good to go. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more of my content, consider following me on Instagram or Twitter where I do a lot of updates on my animals. Links are in the description below. If you really like what I do here and you want to support this channel, I now have a Patreon page. Link is also in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.